Hey, I'm Cade, and this is Cade Made, where I share with you my ongoing creative journey, DIY adventures, and home improvement projects. And in this video, I'm showing you the transformation of our front garden and our front porch and how we created this most whimsical and beautiful, mostly historically appropriate front of our house on our 1909 American Foursquare. So this project really began in March when our garden began growing in. You can see the daffodils coming in there and those yucca plants in the background and plenty of overgrown euonymus, periwinkle, and Boston ivy. So we just needed to clear out a lot of those spaces so we could incorporate new in. A good way to find out what your garden looks like if you move in in the later part of the year where you don't get to see it grown in is going into Google Street View and just looking at what it looks like when the photographs were taken. Um, here I knocked out some really uneven concrete in the front entry and I brought up these limestone pieces that I found in our backyard and just tried to rearrange them so that they fit together like a mosaic and then started leveling those out and filling that in with sand. And I put several buckets of sand on here and just broomed it in, poked it in, worked it in there and then eventually the water also helped establish that a little bit more. That old scalloped edge concrete garden edge needed to go so we could incorporate something that was a little bit more appropriate to the house, appropriate to what the house was asking for and mostly just what we wanted. So I dug out along the edge after I took those out and made a little bit more space and then started placing these stones that I found around our property on abandoned lots in the neighborhood and some other spaces as well. And also my partner did several trips with the wheelbarrow around to find these stones, but it was relatively easy. And if you live in any rural area, there's obviously stones everywhere, but you just kind of place them together to the point where they interlock. And then again, I'm in just pushing the sand from the sidewalk into the edge of that. It gives it more of a complete look and keeps some of the weeds away for a little while. After doing that, you're gonna wanna just tighten in on your garden where you've worked your soil, right? And press that towards the edge so that those stones move as little as possible, especially while you're there. Isn't that fun? That's great, I love that. Anyways, we did this all along the front as well as down the entire driveway side of the house. And my partner really did work hard while I was out of town at one point and making sure that that was established and looked really, really great. These are a couple little just progress shots of in between things, completing one thing. And then as we pulled out all of that stuff and reworked the soil just so we could establish things again. Now moving into April, we've established the gardens. We've established our perennials that we purchased early in the year. You can see those money plants. And here I am planting some hostas, which are such great filler for shade, part shade, and sun applications. This dianthus is a wonderful ground cover perennial that flowers a lot in the summer, which can be really helpful. Hostas, hostas everywhere. This rhododendron, which will flower in the spring, as well as this azalea. They're part of the same family. They're an evergreen, beautiful sculptural quality to them. And again, these wonderful spring blooms. For your all summer blooms, you're going to want to plant some aggressive annuals like impatience. I plant impatience in every open space between my perennials because the perennials are going to bloom at their particular time. And then the impatience and the begonias and some of these other really nice annuals that are very inexpensive are going to give you floral color all summer long. Peony. These antique peonies have probably been here forever and they are fabulous. They are pink. We have a few white ones and they smell great. So get some peony if you don't have it already. It's perfect for a whimsical fairy tale garden. Yes, my friends, that is a original penny tile mosaic porch floor. I do not know how I deserve this, but it definitely needed to be cleaned. So I began using some dish soap and some Fabuloso and just scrubbing it with a broom and then power washing off the surface. And you can see how well the power washer worked in moving off the dirt and grime. One of my biggest inspirations for our house and especially this front porch was 
Frederick Church's Olana Home and Studio in Hudson Valley. Google it, you'll just be floored. But he incorporates a lot of world items and throw pillows, very loose. I put a coverlet on this chaise lounge that we got out of the dumpster down the street and incorporated this uh, ice cream parlor table that was one of my dad's DIYs from when he was a teenager. I found these wicker chairs in nearly perfect condition for $20 a piece at the thrift store and then incorporated these camel bag uh, sacks and with, with just pillows in them and then a couple throw pillows that I made from an Indian silk sari that I had a remnant of. Home sweet home, baby, that it is. Our beautiful friend Heavenly dropped off these thrifted $12.99 curtains, which I hung up on the side of the porch to add a little privacy from the building next door. So here I am in the park across the street up the hill cutting these invasive grapevines out of the canopy of the trees and having a little bit of a party too back there up in the forest. Uh, but I am collecting it so that I can complete the trellis for the vines that go over the front of the porch, which I began last December for our holiday decorations. And then as the spring kind of came upon us, I decided to keep it and grow vines on it maybe. So in order to hang the grapevine onto the porch, I just drilled a pilot hole and put some very small eye hooks in the holes and then attached a small piece of wire onto the eye hook so I could wrap it around the grapevine and start incorporating it onto the porch. It's relatively light. I don't know how heavy the vines will be, but I don't think they'll be too light. And that wood and those eye hooks are in there pretty substantially. Uh, I just naturalized with as many grapevines as I needed and then incorporating it near the ground so it looks like it's coming out of the ground and giving the vines that I've pre-grown and are pre-planted a place to grow up. And it just, just means just adding as much until your composition is correct. You're the best little helper. <laughs> Much of this trumpet vine had grown to length over on this side of the porch, and I had just kept it sort of tucked back. But I, as carefully as I could, intertwined parts of the vine so it could begin training it up the new trellis. And then I thought maybe I'd just add one more piece after looking at it for a minute. I don't know if you've noticed it in the video so far, but there is a huge crack going down the center of our front steps, which needed to be repaired because there's a crack in the middle of our front steps. So I knocked out and knocked in all of the crumbling, loose, and cracked areas to give me space to push in new concrete mixture. And once I had finished doing that, I made a very loose, concrete quick creep mix and started filling in the spaces that were cracked. This is not meant to last for forever, but it's just giving us a little bit of time before we can actually replace the entire step. So I'm, this mixture is extremely wet so it can be established itself and give me a little bit of working time. And then if you sweep it off, it gives it a little texture because I was trying to accommodate the texture of the much repaired steps as they were. All right, friends, this is where it gets a little experimental. I made a concrete slurry, and in addition to mixing it with water, I mixed in an acrylic bonding agent and then started applying a very thin layer in order to cohese all of the different surfaces from the different repairs and the different colors of concrete used. I did incorporate pigment into it, but as you can see here, it just simply did not do the job. And you could see the center repair clear as day, still looked like it had a crack going down the middle of it. So I did it again and then started trying other color schemes with this slurry concrete mixture and then creating small layers on top of it. And it looked good while it was wet, but it really just did not look good once it was dry. And finally, I decided to paint them. I decided to paint these steps, but unfortunately, when I painted them, it was wrong. The gallon of paint was wrong. There was way too much red in it. So I went back to the paint store and had the color corrected for 45 minutes 
by incorporating a little bit of green and black to cut the red and match the limestone surrounding it a little bit better. And I think they did a fantastic job. The front of your home says so much about who you are and the state and condition of that home and the intention behind that home. And when your house, like ours, is 112 years old, it really does take some work and up upkeep to make sure that it remains this substantial piece of history for you. So from the wrought iron fence in the front, just by planting some wonderful annual vines and incorporating elephant ears, which can be reused every year if stored appropriately for your climate or left in the ground, depending on where you are. You can really create something special and full in a very short amount of time. And then looking here at the front garden, which is not a large space, we've really added a lot of life for this year before adding a lot more permanent shrubs and things that will just be investments in the future. But we've really landed some beautiful things with the coral bells and keeping some of the peony and incorporating a couple ferns. And, you know, it's just really interesting what you can do with so little. I think the steps up to the porch really turned out phenomenally for the bit of drama that it was to get them there, but I'm very pleased with how cohesive the looks now. This trellis just makes me so happy. And it is so fairy tale, I can't even tell you. And knowing that these vines are going to completely encompass that by the end of the summer, it's only July, so there's so much more growth time. It just really is a dream come true. All my life I wanted a front porch, and I was so ready for this. I had the furniture, I knew the vision, I knew that I wanted it to look like a salon deck on the Titanic, or Olana, the house I talked about earlier, Frederick Church's house, and I just wanted it to be something that was reminiscent of the era, a time capsule of somebody who had the fortune of having some really cool world objects, which, you know, I've been collecting all of my life. Even the coverlet on the Chase Lounge is from my grandparents. They had an entire room wallpapered in that at one point, and that was in that room. That is a unpainted varnished beadboard ceiling on the front porch that's virtually unheard of at this point uh, i always bring my house plants outside during the summer it helps them grow so much i'm really looking forward to seeing the plants just cascading over the entryway the house numbers are from rokewood pottery company Moving on to the side garden, I used a lot of last year's elephant years that had reproduced and made more. I only bought three last year and look how many I have now, including the front one. So that's a real giver, those elephant ears, if you have a sunny or part shade area. This is a volunteer squash, maybe summer squash vine. Um, it's growing rapidly and I absolutely love the way that it looks. Our friends Dana and Dennis, thank you guys so much, gave us all of these grasses along the side. They were splitting their grasses. They had that elephant grass and then that wonderful maiden grass. And it just will eventually fill in even more and look fantastic in years to come. I used the power washer to make those designs in the concrete. That may or may not stay. Um, and then one last thing, just to finish this baby off. Our friend Aaron gave us these fairy lights and I am obsessed. Thank you, Aaron, for the inspiration. And I got more and incorporated them onto the trellis. So all of those vines will actually glow once they're covered, which will be very magical. If you'd like to hang out with me some more and enjoy me for some fun DIY projects, some arts and crafts and home improvements, you know where to find me here on YouTube at Cade Made. And if you'd like to visit with me on Instagram, you can find me at Cade Made DIY. Looking forward to being with you soon. Thank you so much and have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day.